This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Is your pet stressed out? Does your pet need annual vaccines? Which pet is best for a child? Would you know if your dog was in pain? Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor, where you'll learn everything about keeping your pet healthy and happy. From pet care, pet meds and grooming, to pet food, pet insurance and dental care, this is the place to find out everything there is to know about pet wellness. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets because it's your pet. Health matters. Please welcome your pet doctor host, veterinarian media consultant and veterinarian, Dr. Bernadine Cruz. Were you one of those folks that resisted getting a pandemic pet, thought there was enough craziness in the world and adding another pet to the mixture was more than you could handle? But recently, you've been toying with the idea of having a baby in the house. Dog might take too much time and not sure if you have the room. Cat, you've had them in the past, they're pretty easy. Litter box, food, water, occasional trip to the vet. Yeah, easy peasy. Well, maybe not. My guest is Dr. Ellen Lindell. As a board certified veterinary behaviorist, she's a firm believer that when a pet owner understands how kittens grow physically, mentally, and emotionally, you greatly increase the chance that they will thrive. Behavioral issues can be minimized and the bond between human and the feline will be strong and nurturing. We're gonna be right back after the short break and talk to Dr. Lindell. Molly, here's your dinner. (coughs) Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your cat tree tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. So, Dr. Lindell, thank you. I so appreciate you being on with us today. And I think that being a kitty lover myself, this is a topic I have a lot of questions on myself because I have one kitty who I swear when it was a kitten was kind of the short bus kitten kind of challenged and then she bloomed and I have another one who's a little feral and she's still my little space cadet it's like ah I don't understand yeah and thank you for having me and and I think what you already just said is really important point is that your kitten suddenly blooming and I think one of the things that we tend to be is not patient with our pets And I think sometimes patience can be the key to having a good relationship with with your new kitten and and any pet that you get. So with kittens, I know, as I was saying in the introduction, people oftentimes will get them because they think they're easier than having a puppy. And I've had dogs, and I do think cats are a little bit easier. But do you agree with this point of view that they really are that easier species to train to have in the house? So I think that they take the same amount of energy effort and um, supervision guidance that a puppy would take. Um, They still can chew up your house. They still can go to the bathroom in the wrong place. They still can use their teeth, their claws, instead of playing with their toys and use you as a toy. I think the part that sounds easy is that is really more related to what are people's expectations. So when they get a puppy, they expect they'll be walking it in a public place. And when people get a kitten, they don't necessarily think ahead. And so if your goal for your kitten is to have the best pet ever as a companion, and you have very little interest in taking them on walks or outings, then theoretically, it's easier because you don't have to go on all those walks. But on the other hand, if you think you want to be that person that travels with your kitten and takes your kitten on business trips or visits the family, and maybe the family has children, then it's exactly the same amount of effort as it is for a puppy. 
Yep, I think you're right. I think a lot of us are a wee bit on the lazy side. And when you do see someone who has that cat that's on a harness and is walking around the park, it's like, really? My cat would never do that. And yeah, we didn't take the time and effort to do it when there were babies. You had an article in one of the veterinary journals, uh, veterinary uh, clinician's brief that I really enjoyed talking about the developmental stages of kitten. And I've been a veterinarian for a while and I've been a cat owner and lover since the wee small kid. I was like, oh, some of these things I really did not appreciate, sad to say. So I'm glad I do now. What are these developmental stages? Because I think veterinarians, pet owners have heard more for puppies, but just kind of think kittens go from fluff ball to couch potato. Yeah. And that's so those stages were based on some research, several research projects, um, just looking at what the kittens in the projects would do. And then when you really think about it, it, they're really based on the physiology, the physical development. So when you're born and you can't see and you're, you know, you can't hear, you're, you may not be moving around as much. And then as you develop physically, then you start moving more. And if your eyes and ears are open, so we always call the neonatal period, that first period where nothing works yet very well. And, and so you're very dependent and, and not, not doing much. And then as your ears open, you can notice things and then what you are exposed to will affect your future. And so Physically, I mean, when it all boils down to it, you know, I think one day there'll be this little test that tells us what our chemicals are and exactly what's in our brain. And there certainly are going to be differences. And those differences are based on so many things, you know, the, the diet of the mother, the health of the mother, the what's in that kitten's environment when the mother's pregnant. So basically, as the body develops, then you're leaving that neonatal period into that transition to being um, a species or an animal ready to take in a lot more stuff. And so then part of stuff for a kitten is the social stuff, right? Because we are social people and we want our pets to be social. So then that transitions into what gets called the sensitive period for socialization, where where kittens are noticed to be the most sensitive based on the things we watch them do. And so kittens develop relatively quickly relative to say puppies. And so their sensitive period, their most impressionable period for socializing probably is that two to seven weeks of age, where we think of puppies as starting their socialization at seven weeks of age. So during that period, the, the way that got labeled is because we learned that when kittens are heavily handled gently in that young period, they tend to grow up with more interest in being social and interacting with, with humans, or we kind of use it for other species as well. Um, and But as far as the most people are most worried about their kitten getting you know, being a happy uh, companion in the house. So, so that period is where that kittens are most impressionable and, 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 and that's how that got labeled. And then we get into growing up and then you just get into, you know, your sexual behaviors and your behaviors that animals do as their hormones are turning on. So that would be, you know, that starts to happen around five months. So you have that little period where they're less sensitive, say seven weeks ish to that five months. And that's when we're usually adopting our kittens and trying to do the best we can to continue socializing them, even if their brain is slightly less prepared. So it's very interesting, Dr. Lindell. So this neonatal is a very short period when they have this need to be socialized. They have a sensitive period. And I'd love to have chat about that a bit more. Some have gotten these little kittens that are just itty bitties. And these kittens sometimes seem to be best kittens that are out there behavioral wise, fearless. And then you get some other myself when I adopted my youngest, well, she was found, she was maybe six weeks of age. And I love calling her my little space cadet because huh, we're getting better after a couple of years, but she is still a challenge. She's not the lap fuzzy kitty. So talk to us a little bit about why these kittens need to be with their queen and their litter mates and then kind of transition into when's the best time to adopt them? Because that's always a question. Yeah, that is a good question. So we think of it as when the kittens with their queen, they're basically kind of learning the language of being a social cat. So their queen's going to do touch and um, there's going to be that appropriate amount of tactile stimulation and the, the kittens are going to observe the queen and 
cats learn by watching things and kittens will try things out. And if it's about doing something to the queen or another cat, the queen might intervene or the kitten that's being, you know, so it'd be with the litter mates, the kittens might, you know, say ouch in the kitten's way. And so that's how social behaviors start to develop. What works okay and what doesn't. And whenever I watch, because I spend all my day watching, you know, dogs and cats and other animals, you know, it's always interesting to me that even as somebody that watches all day long, there's still a delay in what the human perceives versus what the cat or dog or other animal perceives. So you'll see a kitten move away a little or be more tentative in response to something. And you go, why why'd that kitten just do that? Like, I didn't see that his buddies tell them to stop. And so they get that ability to learn that language of the social um, life is going to be improved by not having to start with a foreign language. Like when they come to us, we're already foreign and they have to pick up that whole language. So I think that you mentioned those kittens, sometimes the ones that are hand raised seem bolder. I don't know that may be, I don't know that I can think of a study for sure. There could be one, but what I do think of them as being is, is slightly less appropriate socially. Like they push a little harder at things, not in a malicious way, but just as in, well, this is how hard I thought you're supposed to mm-hmm. bite. And humans being kind hearted are more likely to tolerate more perhaps than a kitten might tolerate and they might think oh he's just a baby and then when they decide it hurts you know after the 10th time people want to try to make it change now after you know after they've accepted it and the kitten thought that was supposed to be okay if that makes sense so what are some of the major issues behavioral it sounds like they need to know limits and they learning those limits better from the queen and the litter mates versus us because we let them get away with too much Yeah, you could think of it that way. It almost sounds like one slice lighter than that would be good. But you know what I mean? Like, I think of it as trying to draw a line and you're right, it is like getting away with something, but drawing a line is saying these, these things are just not available. And almost I think of it as more not thinking of what we want to stop as the kittens are developing and pipe might get bad behaviors as much as thinking of how would we like it to go and make that the way it always goes and being consistent. Maybe that's a better way of thinking of it. So if we always have the same expectation, it becomes a little bit easier for the kitten to say, well, that's just not simply not available. Like the counter is just not something that I go on because I just can't make it up there. Maybe there's something blocking it temporarily or something that makes it not a place to go. So we just say, hey, look at the floor, how nice the floor is. Look at how nice the chair is. Um, look at all these toys to play with. And and we we kind of draw the line that way, if that makes sense. So you reinforce the positive, those things that you want them to do. It's like, we don't have negatives, but oh, look at all these positives we have. Yeah. And along with the positives, sometimes there is a little blocking, but it doesn't have to be unpleasant. So in other words, if we don't allow a kitten to do something and it never knew that it could, it'll be a lot easier than if we then say, oh, we decided we don't like it that way after all. Um, sometimes I think of it as the queen has a list of rules in her mind that I, I sometimes say to people, if you could give your cat a quiz, would your cat know what you wanted? And I'll bet the queen would say, I know just what I want from these kittens. This is okay. This isn't okay. And and that's just how it goes. Like they probably don't wake up and say, well, it's Sunday today. We'll let the kitten do these things because it's Sunday and we'll go back to the other way on Monday. But people have oh day off. It's okay. You can do more stuff or all right, well, I'm making something delicious on the counter. So maybe I'll let you up here today. And so every day is a brand new day. And the kitten's like, wow, this is great. I wonder what today is going to be like. Yes, consistency. I love that one. So getting back to when do we adopt these kittens? When's the best time? It sounds like they need some time with mom, but they're going to need some time to learn our foreign language. And that's a great way of uh, expressing it. Yeah, they're learning our language now. We have to learn theirs. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, and sometimes, as you know, it, they, there's not really much choice. Like kittens just appear and then they need a home. I suppose in the perfect world, kittens would probably stay with their families till they were 10 or 12 weeks old. Oh, wow. And that probably would get them to the point where socializing with other kittens is a little bit less of a big deal. Like their, their socialization with kittens sort of peaks, you know, by 10 weeks of age. 
However, so they may get better cat skills and they may even get better, some better in-house skills, but they also won't have exposure to random humans and they won't have exposure to what the microwave sounds like. And so everything there could be very scary for a kitten. So there's always that, that balance. And part of it is really what environment is the kitten going to be in when they're 10 to 12 weeks old. So if you had somebody that was that diligent kitten raiser that took the whole litter on trips and took them to grandma's house and the kittens were like, wow, this, there's like so many worlds. This is the best. Then it really would be awesome that they got adopted after that period because they got to hang out. But on the other hand, if they're going to be in the barn, in the box, in the cage, they're going to have no stimulation other than the, their, their family. It's probably not worth the risk or the cost. So typically knowing that Sadly, most kitten raisers are not taking it to grandma in the car and doing all those things to get them exposed to the real world. Yeah. Seven yeah. weeks of age, yeah. eight weeks seven, of age. Seven weeks is, is probably seven, you know, seven, eight weeks is probably just fine because then they're really, they're, they're really starting to slow down on their ability to pick up on new, um, you know, on new things. So you really want to catch them at that period and they should usually be weaned, which usually is a, you know, it starts around four weeks and it's a, a little bit of a slow process, but, but most kittens are, are, you know, being able to do their hunting if they're a wild by the time they're seven or eight weeks old. I'm learning a lot right now from Dr. Ellen Lindell, a board certified veterinary behaviorist. I'm learning so much myself right now. And I want everyone to stick around. We're going to take a short break. We're going to be right back and learn more about these kittens. Please have a seat in the waiting room. The doctor will be with you shortly, right after these messages. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There's no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to the Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. Dr. Lindell. Thank you. I am learning, as I just mentioned, so much from you, and this is great. And I'm going to be excited to go back to the office and tell everybody with a new kitten all the things that I'm learning from you. You mentioned earlier on about a socialization period right after being neonatal, those E guys, you've adopted them, they're in the home, and they have the sensitive periods. Tell us a bit more about that one. So socialization, we use that a little bit loosely, and we, we mean it that we're exposing them not only to social things, people, animals that they will want to interact with, it, as well as things in their environment. So envir- and things that the cats might have to, or we hope they'll take in stride. So it is a little bit of a, a habituation process where, where we learn that these things belong in our world. So when we get a kitten, the best thing we can do is, as we discussed earlier, try to think of what might be in that kitten's world. And that can really vary. And sometimes we don't know the most common things that one would think it would be useful to have um, a kitten used to would be dogs that are quiet and friendly and not overbearing and not dangerous for the kitten. And children, because children are different. If they are going to be traveling kittens to be quite comfortable getting in a car, in a carrier and noticing the different nap noises that happen. If you plan on being on a farm with your kitten or on picnics, whatever horses you're going to run into, those kinds of things. And the process is because we're kind of arranging it for the kitten. They're not walking out and saying, you know, I hope today's the day they take me to see, you know, the, the, the toddlers, it's going to be toddler day. We want to make sure that the kitten is not overwhelmed. 
And there's a little bit of a judgment call, and that's why it becomes super important for people to, if they get a kitten, be, be able to, as you mentioned earlier, know their language. So they're, you know, using, watching carefully for signs that kittens are worried. Are they puffed up? Are their ears back? Are they hissing or hunched? Things that are saying, oh my gosh, this is way, way too much, because no good learning happens when you're that stressed. And so how much is too much is going to be very kitten dependent because they are already getting more mature and they have become a little bit of who they are personality wise. So some kittens will already be a little tend to be a little more worried. Some will be more bold and they'll be curious and want to in, get involved. And so we always have to be very flexible when we do an exposure or an outing with a kitten and always bring things that the kitten loves to do. So if the kitten has a favorite toy or is one of those kittens that likes to burrow into a blanket or is a snack kitten that would be so happy if you just gave them some snacks, bringing things along and always having that hopefully by now comfortable carrier or nest where that kitten can always be put to take away all the stimulation. So for that worried kitten, it might be very appropriate to take that kitten in his basket to grandma's house and he spends his whole time there and all he knows is, boy, there's weird smells and weird noises, but I don't know, I'm fine. I'm in my little place. We always want to provide that safety for them and not say, oh, a little bit more, um, not push at, at the kitten. So it sounds like take it nice and slow, make sure that they have a safe space that they can go to and really read your kitten's body language that even if it's not hissing and not puffed, if it's, you know, little ears are back and it's in a little crouched position and it's looking rather tense. Yeah, that's your baby saying this is a bit more than I can handle right now. Sometimes it's helpful to think of a context in which you know your kitten is is enjoying himself. So if you think of what he looks like when you come home from work or when you walk into the room or is playing with a toy, that is probably a happy face and a happy body. And so kind of get that image in your head and it'll give you an idea of whether he's having a good time or thinking that this is not the right thing. Dr. Lindell, as you are adopting these babies and bringing them home, the question I've been asked so many times, you know, is it better to bring a boy kitten home, a girl kitten home? Which one seems to be, you know, the more robust, less timid if they're looking for, you know, that really outgoing pet? Is there really a sex difference between the two? Yeah. So I think we have a lot of small studies and a lot of anecdotes, but but I think largely there's not a huge difference. So one study might say the male cats initiate more fighting, but another might say that the females do. And one will say a male is more affectionate, one will say a female. So I can't say that they're the same, but, but I'm not sure that there's something that I could definitely put my, my fingers on and say, it's not that more boy cats sit in the room than girls. I think there's just personalities and cats are so strong, regardless of the gender. So I, I think temperament might be a tough one. I think I'd look more for what that kitten is like as an individual. Boy cats are slightly more at risk of marking when they grow up, even though it's not a huge risk, it's there. So there is always that. But otherwise, I don't think anything's really making me think that I've got a study that says this is it. This is the one for this kind of person versus the other. Then Dr. Lindell being a behaviorist also, the other question I get is, all right, I already have a female cat at home. Should I bring home a male kitten or a female kitten? Which one's more likely to get along? And I've always said it kind of gets down to the individual kitten. Would you agree or what are your views? Yes, I do agree. And the same thing as I was mentioning before about who initiates arguing. There, there's not a strong gender bias in cats that present for um, for arguing amongst themselves the way there is in dogs. So that we see all combinations of, of genders that are arguing or don't, because there's so many reasons why cats might not get along, but there doesn't seem to be quite the, now I have a grown up, like what dogs like to do is you have a grown up girl and then we get another girl. And as that girl grows up, the older one, you don't need to live here anymore, but we don't see a lot of that in the cats. At least I don't, and, you know, I see a lot of cats that argue. Um, not arguing, but I'd mentioned earlier that one of my cats was a little feral and my space cadet, she's very timid. You know, I've been working with her slowly. She is my best friend 
if I'm laying down and she loves me even more if I have a brush in my hand. So those are ways that I can get through to her. But otherwise, if I'm standing up in the house, moving around, and I try to reach for her, oh no, she is gone. So are there any little tips when you get a feral kit and you have no idea what they've been exposed to? They definitely haven't been socialized to people and you want to do the best. Huh, what can you do for these babies? Well, I think just what you said, I think it's the reach. It's that's that we've been talking about a little bit about crossing a line or pushing a little too hard. And I think what we think is is a friendly gesture and we think we're giving them space. I, I think we're not sometimes. So I, I think the more, the more you do eye contact, direct body, ask, even sometimes speaking can be too much. So cat, cats, kittens, cats, adult cats as well, they do much better when they can set the scene. They like to do the initiating. So what you mentioned about your brush is a really good hint because sometimes then they can pair something that they really love which they've agreed and decided of their own accord to approach for. And then let's say, you know, you wanted to offer that kitty something like a brushing when you were in a different position, but you didn't push, then your kitten might say, well, it is that brush that I love so much. And, you know, she's on a taller chair, but maybe it'll be just as good there. So let me make that initiative. And, and that, that can help a lot, I think. So I think if you find something that the cat volunteers to push into you for, then now the kitten saying, I survived that, that, that worked out just fine. And it ended up feeling good, but they seem to need to make that discovery. So bottom line, be patient. I may never have the lap kitty like my other one. And this is just this baby's personality. And that's what I have. Well, you may be able to arrange for, for her to be closer. People can help their cats feel comfortable being closer. The problem with cats that might go in a lap and not know that it will, will feel okay is that once they're in the lap, we like to want to take it one step further and then start petting. And so then the lap became awful again. And they're like, I knew I didn't want that lap for some reason. So sometimes having, I like to take like a little blanket or fleecy and put it where I'm pretty sure the kitten will be fine and make sure I promise myself not to look, talk, anything about the kitten. And then when the kitten's like, this is like one of the better places to be, why don't I be here more? Maybe then my kite could move that a little closer. We talked about predictability. It also helps when you have a way to communicate what your next step is going to be. So since kittens can learn words when they're in a neutral context, there's a good time to, to add a word such as, you know, dinner, snacks, toy, so that you could just say a word without moving and changing their world around. And the kitten can be like, oh, snacks. Oh, I know where those happen. Those are right. Those are in the kitchen. So now the kitten again has gotten the jump start on it and you didn't have to get up and the kitten's like, oh my gosh, I wonder what she's going to do next. Does that make sense? Totally, totally makes sense. We'd kind of also talked in the beginning of oftentimes people are getting kittens instead of puppies because, ah, they're easy. You got the litter box. You don't have to take them out going potty. You know, they have some pretty much built in behaviors that are very cat like. But I know that one of the biggest behavioral issues that cats have is not using that litter box, that they're peeing outside of the box, etc. Tell us about why people don't understand why cats use litter box and why they don't use their litter box. Yeah, I kind of think of it as a miracle that cats live in these humongous houses and they find this little square and use it. Like, I can't even believe they do that. And I think that when they're kittens, you know, kittens are exploring and learning and, and any behavior that a kitten chooses, it will choose because it got that brilliant idea and it felt good and it solved its problem or, you know, any of any of the above. So self reward. So going to the bathroom when you need to go and finding something that isn't a box, but looks like it'll serve the purpose would be that example of exploring and discovering new things that you wish as a person your kitten had never figured out. So the more you provide opportunities that fit what you want, which might be very inconvenient for you at the beginning, meaning a box in more places than you'd ever thought you wanted a box. So if you discover your kitten likes the third floor, 
maybe you, you know, not maybe you will need a box on the third floor, or you will certainly find that your kittens found a soft spot in the rug or a hole in the in the floor. And, and they'll be like, Oh, this, this works fine. So the more you provide opportunities to solve the kittens basic needs, the easier it gets later, because now you have a strong condition response. And now that kitten might take that big journey, because they'll be like, well, I don't know why my bathroom's not here, but I know that is my bathroom. So I'm going to find it. And I think one of the major things, so many people don't realize that cats are really predators and prey. And the reason I understand they use the cat box is because they don't want the predators to know they're there. So I'm going to bury my scat. I'm going to bury my poop and my pee. So nobody knows I was here. So shh, don't tell anyone. Can you make a quick I know we're running out of time. There's so much more I want to talk about. The type of litter box that you recommend, so many people want closed boxes because they think, ah, you know, I don't want the smell. I don't want to see it. I don't want the lid over the place. Is that what a cat wants? Yeah. And, and there are certainly some studies that point towards what one cat or another likes. But but the bottom line is that your cat is your cat and, and you need to ask your cat. So having a choice is easier so usually when people get a kitten, initially for a little while, at least, hopefully, you know, enough time for the kitten to establish strong preferences, they are somewhat confined or supervised, you know, fewer brilliant ideas of the kittens that way. But in that kitten's small room of confinement where they are apt to use a box, that's a good place to put those choices. So most cats do like open boxes. Most cats do like boxes where they're one and a half times the length of the cat. They like to be able to have room to move around in it. It seems to me to make sense that a cat wouldn't want to work so hard to go through some of those tunnels just to find their sand. So, but cats can learn to work that hard eventually. And then why people run into trouble later is because when the cats can't do it anymore, because they hurt, they're older, they have arthritis now, now they don't want to do that. And they're going back to finding what feels good. So I think there's a lot of things, including anything related to enrichment, where you have to ask your kitten, what does your kitten think is a fun game? What does your kitten think is the best bathroom? And then once you know what it is, then it becomes important to pick locations that are going to work for you. Dr. Lindell, any parting words on how to decode what's going on between your kitten's ears? Well, this was just a great opportunity. I was really been fun to talk. I think that the most important thing is to just, have, you know, enjoy your kitten and think about the kitten that you have and your kitten may be super friendly. Your kitten may be a little timid, but think about the things you would like to bring out in your kitten and be very patient about that. And I think it will be the best way for you to bond. Think about sharing and listening to what your kitten has to say and, and helping your kitten enjoy your ideas. Awesome. Dr. Lindell, this has just been some really awesome information. I've really enjoyed it. Next kitten that I get, probably years and years from now, I'm going to incorporate all this and definitely I go back to practice, tell people about it too, so they can have that wonderful bonding with their kitten. Appreciate what you have. It's not going to be like one that you had in the past. Each one is an individual. So thank you. Thank you. This is Dr. Bernadine Cruz. You've been listening to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio. Please tune in next week. We'll give you some more information on how to make you the best possible pet owner. Thanks for listening. Pets can be a wonderful addition to your life because they're a member of the family. Keeping them healthy and happy is important. Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor with veterinary media consultant and veterinarian Dr. Bernadine Cruz. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile, or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets. The Pet Doctor, on demand every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com.